transition types. So right now we are on a wipe. You can see that in the in the UI. And if I use the fader, you see the wipe is happening. We have a zoom and uh, then I'm making a zoom. So you know all these functions, I'm pretty sure. We also have stingers that are going to execute right away, as you can see. So that's up here. The source that we have selected to that overlay on these keys. So it's basically remembering for us which uh, input was assigned to an overlay and now we can toggle it on and off on these keys as well. Airfly is your perfect tactile controls designed for vMix. That means no more keyboards, no more compromises, but you get a true network broadcast control panel. And Airfly is also the cost-effective controller in the Skahoy's Switcher Panel series. It has blue pill inside, and that means this platform allows Airfly to connect directly to vMix. There's no proxy software needed between the controller and your software. This is the Airfly. And it's a no-frills controller. It's really plain and simple. And since we designed it for vMix, we have also put labels on the buttons that reflect a lot of functionality. You have in vMix Plus, you get some of the classic Skahoy buttons in the upper right corner here that has displays with a function written in them. So these buttons can change around, as you'll see in a moment. But if we just look at the basic feature set of the Airfly for vMix, you find that we have a preview row and a program row. Program is also called active in vMix, as I'm sure you know already, but that's the terminology that is generally applicable to switcher systems. The preview is uh, green. So you see in vMix over here on this laptop that we are selecting the preview source and I can select the active source on the upper row buttons here. So as I'm doing that, you see the changes that you would also expect in vMix. So that's the panel right here. Uh, and just by way of introduction, we have over here the, a laptop that runs vMix in a, a fairly simple configuration that makes it easy for us in this video to follow along and see what we are doing on the panel. And over here on this laptop, I have the interface of the Airfly. So the Airfly has a built-in web server that allows us to do all configurations on the panel. There is nothing happening in the cloud here or on some server out there. It's all on the panel. So it actually does work offline. And it, as I mentioned in the beginning, talks directly to vMix. So it's really just this controller and that computer together over a single Ethernet cable with PoE. Let's just take a quick glance at the interface that runs on the Airfly. We call this software reactor. It's We call it a panel management software. And in here, you can, you can see the Airfly panel. It's actually possible to add additional panels. So you already see that the scalability with your Airfly, you can actually grow. You can add, uh, for instance, a Crosspoint 48. You should check out that controller. It has a, basically buttons in the same alignment as on the Airfly, but it has also a lot of displays to show you source names and so on. So that's one way you can expand. And if you do so, it's basically a simple matter of changing your configuration from vMix small, which is the Airfly, and vMix medium would be one that allows you to select, uh, select an additional panel right here. In terms of configuration, there are other things like we can identify the panel, which, uh, by the way, it, it's pretty neat if you have a ton of these interfaces up for different Skahoy controls it, that you can identify what you're working on. We also have a um, little window where we can bring up the inputs and we can offer alternative uh, colors and uh, no, not colors in this case, but labels. That is more relevant if you have the larger, bigger brother of the Airfly where we have this place for all these keys. So here with this no frills controller, we have uh, just numbers one through 12 and then the shift key will bring us up to 13 and beyond for the source selection. Uh, there's obviously a uh, fader here, so we can also make transitions. In this upper right corner of the controller, you find uh, the ability for us to select your, your different um, uh, uh, transition types. So right now we are on a, a wipe. You can see that in the, in the UI. And if I use the fader, you see the wipe is happening. We have a uh, zoom 
and uh, then I'm making assume. So you know all these functions, I'm pretty sure. We also have stingers that are going to execute right away, as you can see. So that's up here. And just to get the last few details commented on, uh, live is start streaming, record is start recording, and this one allows us to select external output. Uh, a shortcut to that. But we have ways to control all the outputs in VMAX uh, in the menu, which I'll show you pretty soon. Also, you can select in the menu, in the engineering menu, how we can uh, enable and disable the various streams that we can start from VMAX. So there's a lot of things hidden up here in the menu that we can adjust, but these are just quick ways to start streaming, start recording, and so forth. Now I've been talking about the menu a little bit, so let's look at what is hidden up here. Well, um, the default is that we are on the uh, mix menu, and uh, if you press this button on the side, you see that we are changing between which of the four mixes in vMix that we are operating. So right now we are on mix one, but now we are on mix two, we can go to mix three and mix four. So these are basically selectable on this button. And notice that I'm pressing the sides. That's a four-way button. So it's like an encoder. You can turn uh, left and right and then go forth and back between your mixes. If I press the bus key, then suddenly this row of utility buttons assumes function. And that function is assigning inputs to the selected output. Once again, I can select output three, four, uh, full screen one, two, and these outputs are again selected by the four-way button. Notice how this one is now highlighted. It means that on output two, I have input source number one, but I could select four instead and route that. So if I go to output three, I could route output two. If I go back to output two, I see that I still have input four right there. So there you see how we can use this um, row of utility buttons to assign that. You have probably also noticed if you looked at the other keys that this is also where we work with our overlays and this is where we uh, assign sources to our multi-viewers. So if we go to overlays, um, if you press the button in itself, it means that this row of utility buttons are now assigned to toggling our overlays uh, or actually assigning our overlays um, uh, yeah, assigning inputs to the overlays. So, um, and if I if I go to output, you see that the the row of buttons are color coded. So you know that know that right, right now it's routing the outputs. Right now it's it's assigning the um, the overlays. And if you want to choose which overlay you're operating, then you are again using the sides of the four-way button to do that. Now let's look at VMix and um, try to enable. Uh, input number two, uh, overlay for input uh, number two here. So that's overlay number one. I could now select overlay number two and then um, we assign source input number uh, four to, to that one. And there's one detail you should notice here, which is that these keys over here are now active. It shows that we have uh, overlay number one and two, they have sources assigned and these become toggle keys. So that's something that we can now toggle on and off the source that we have selected to that overlay on these keys. So it's basically remembering for us which uh, input was assigned to an overlay and now we can toggle it on and off on these keys as well. You can imagine that this is the same for overlay uh, three and four as well. Let's go to multi-viewers. I have a multi-viewer composition here on um, input number 11 and we can control that up here. First of all, which multi-viewer that you are working with, the destination can be selected on this one. And uh, then we can select the layers over here and we can select the sources on that particular layer. But again, if we press the lower edge of the button or basically just press the button as you would normally naturally do it, then it means that this row of, of buttons becomes delegation for selecting uh, which um, uh, multi-view are you working with, with right now. It's multi-view two or we go to 11 as we want. If I click this one, then uh, we are basically selecting the layer that we are operating or affecting by the keys down here. And then finally, and probably what you are most likely to want, this is where you assign the source and that source is aligned again with the buttons down here. And it's also associated with the shift key so that you can get up to 24 sources. So let's look at the multi-view we are having right now. We are currently working on layer number three of multi-view destination 11. And here I can change obviously the source of the lower left um, part of that multi-view um, destination. 
as you can see. And I'm also able to toggle it on and off. So this key becomes a toggle on and off for the layer that are current, is currently selected here. So let's go to layer number two. We are now toggling this one on and off. So all that can actually be managed from the panel. I'm not telling you that this is the right way of doing it. You may want to use the, the UI for it, but you can. And it's up here in that menu. So now you see we got started on working with the menu in, in the top left corner of the Airfly and how much wonderful functionality is actually hidden inside of there. So with the shift key, which is important, you can always press that and press the back button, release the shift key, and now you're back at your default, which is um, basically selecting between these different functions. And now notice that the delegation buttons here are remembering what they are delegating the last time. So we should actually see that we are still, because we went into the bus menu, into the multi-view overlays, and this is sticking. So we are now still delegating sources on multi-view destination 11 using these buttons until we go into bus and we change what these buttons are delegating. So that's how it works. Let's move on to shortcuts. That's um, right here. And shortcuts is something that I, I know you vMix users love about vMix, that you can assign these pretty freely inside of vMix. So let's just go check this and see how it works on this panel. Now, um, in this menu, let's go to shortcuts. You see here are a number of shortcuts. And what is important is that you, you look at the uh, F keys that are assigned to the shortcuts because those F keys are aligned with the, the buttons you find here. We have 12 buttons and that's basically like F1, 2, 3 up to 12. And if I hold down shift, we have F19 right here. So F19 is this one, the hello shortcut while F123 obviously are these and uh, and so on. So that, that probably makes intuitive sense to you. But notice one thing that is very helpful since this row of utility buttons do not have this place that reveal the function, you see that they are color coded and this is something you can do inside vMix. So let's just go to F6 and then edit this one. Then you'll see that it has a blue color and that is assigned inside vMix. So we can browse for a different color for this button. So let's uh, pick a red color like this one. We press OK and we can press OK once again. So now you see that the color has changed to red. In other words, we are able to use vMix for the full assignment and configuration of our shortcut keys on the Airfly. So that's pretty neat. And then if you want to learn shortcut keys, it's actually possible on this upper row of buttons. You see this one called D1 is a um, learn shortcut that has been created here. So we can add a new one. So let's just add a shortcut. And um, then I think we are going to press find and then we press uh, D6. And you see that it registers D6 here. So we can just accept that. And then we can assign a function like uh, set output or anything that we want, set output three, like that. And then we can set it to some kind of source and so on. So as we are now doing that, button number six over here is getting a color because it's now active while all shortcuts that are not are not active. So again, you have that feedback that only keys that has actually functionality assigned to it lights up on the panel. And that's all assignable inside of uh, vMix. So that's pretty neat as well. If we move on in this menu, because there's a lot to cover up here, we get audio as well. So we are now in the audio menu. And there we are using the utility row to pick which channel are we adjusting audio for. So basically, as I am pressing through these, the sources that has audio are now being uh, selected for adjustments up here. So let's pick a source like number two. And there's a number of cool things about this one. First of all, number two has a little bit of audio as associated with it. I think this is a, an NDI camera somewhere in our studio uh, right here, and it picks up some audio from the surroundings. And you can see that in the VU meter. So you have confidence monitoring in the little LED bar just below the screen. But you can also adjust the volume of this. So you can see uh, it's, uh, it's in course mode right now. So if I cl click like this, I'm moving the fader. Also see that in the interface right here. You see that fader is moving pretty quickly through the range. And I can also obviously change it in vMix and you'll see the reflection over here. If you want to, to move it in smaller steps, because this is again four-way button functionality in pretty large steps, then you can click the upper edge to turn on fine mode. And now you can see that the steps that we are taking are much finer than 
uh, they were just before. Now, a number of things that you can easily imagine how that would work is uh, balance. I uh, Once again, I have balance here. So um, I'm able to adjust the balance of this source as well. Just like uh, I adjusted the volume, I can mute it. So you see that I'm muting it, that icon is changing also in VMix. I can solo it. I can also assign it to the master bus or not. And then finally, there's one key that is always assigned to the same thing regardless. And that is the final one here, which is also always our master volume. So that's always available to us up here. So we select the source and we get to do all kinds of, of management of the sources up here. We um, also have a number of things here which are basically blank because you can't assign or work with audio on a number of sources that doesn't have audio. And if we press down shift, then obviously we can also select uh, volume in on input number 15, which I just did by pressing this key when I held down shift. So that is audio adjustments. And then we are basically uh, we have basically covered the standard menu that you find uh, on the airfly in in which in this way but there is a secret gateway to something we call the engineering menu so if we hold down shift then fade to black on most of our uh, switcher panels will blink quickly green and if you press it as it's blinking then you are enabling the engineering menu and here it becomes a little bit technical First of all, this is the IP address of the panel. This is the IP address of the panel, which is useful to know if you boot the panel up and it's connected to a network and you wonder what is the IP address I, I need to use here in the web interface, as you can see, then it will be shown in this display. You also have a home menu key and we are right now on the home screen on, on which you find the IP address. Then you find a number of vMix related things. So the first one is which vMix are you connected to? And now this sometimes blows people's minds and you're like, yeah, what? I mean, yeah, but actually you can go to vMix system number two, three, four, and so on. It's possible that the Airfly could connect to more than just a single vMix installation. Most of you won't need that. But if some of you wonder, could this panel actually control multiple vMixes kind of simultaneously? then yes, you can enter into the engineering menu and you can connect to a second and a third vMix system. What it does require is for you to go over here and add additional vMix instances. And that's basically a matter of adding to call and then you can add manually another vMix system. Um, I think let's just select this one. And then what you need to do is to supply the IP address of that and so on. So as I said, most of you won't need to bother with multiple vMix systems, so it's just gonna stay on vMix system number one. But what you may want to bother with is which of the streams are enabled when you press the live key up here. And that's what you can basically toggle right here. Tie stream number one, two, and three, whatever you have set them up to do in vMix is then tied to the live key in the engineering menu. Another thing in the engineering menu is page number one. This has to do with the panel. You can, um, basically put the panel asleep. You can also adjust the sleep time. How many minutes will it take before the panel is going to dim out uh, or black out basically and uh, dim time where it, it dims a little bit down. You can also adjust the brightness of the displays and uh, you can see that we like to keep them on highest brightness for our videos. We can also change the dimming of the button. So all those things like panel management stuff that happens in the engineering menu and you can exit that by pressing the fade to black button when you are in there. So now we're back to normal. Before we wrap up this video, I want to show you how you can expand your Airfly to include control of other things. Now, obviously, we are mainly concerned with the vMix system, but you might have such as a video router behind the scene that does some of the routing for your sources, or you might also want to add additional vMix functionality that is relevant to you. And I want to show you a clever little concept that we have that helps you do this. First, let's look at the panel because in the menu, you may have noticed that we have something called Quick Glass for Kumo 1616. Kumo is a router series from AJA and uh, a router is basically taking, um, in this case, 16 inputs, signals, video inputs, and then it has 16 outputs. And then you can basically say, I want an output number one, I want to have input number three come out on output number one. And then you could change that to something else. That's what we call routing. It's like outputs in vMix. But if you press this one, it means that you get instant access to routing on an AGA router that we have decide, decided to add. And that decision on adding the router, look here inside of Reactor, you notice that on your far right side of the home screen, you can see that we are not only attached to a vMix system 
on a given IP address, we are also connected to an AJA Kumo router on this IP address here. And then the quick class is, is set up right here where you can see that we have selected a Kumo 1616 quick class. So that's a little bit of configuration code that we have made that gives you functionality with respect to that router. So let's just quickly change to this tab. And here you can see that we have the different uh, outputs of the AJA router. And I'm now selecting output number one. Um, and then you can see that we are routing um, input number three to output number one. So the first thing that you can see up here is that right now we're actually routing to output number three, which is called ADA. That's what you are sh showing in the title. But if I press the upper edge of this button, it's changing into letting me pick which output that I'm routing. So I'm going to monitor left, which is my first output. And then I I uh, click this key again, and now I'm in the routing mode. So basically, as I'm pressing this button, you can see that because monitor left is selected, I'm basically changing which input is routed to output number one. If I wanted to go to output number five, I just do that like this. And um, let me just exit that. And then if I select output number five on my AJA router, you can see that I'm routing that one. So we bring that functionality into the panel by just adding it in Reactor as something called quick class configuration. So let's try to do that on this panel as a way of customizing the, um, the configuration. Because notice that this panel works out of the box. One of the, one of the targets of Reactor is that it has to be easy, it has to be powerful and modular. And the modularity, you have seen that by the future ability to expand into having a larger surface, adding a Crosspoint 48 controller. The ease of use is basically that out of the box, you just select a configuration. We have pre-made it for you. We have thought a lot of design into it for you. And now even when you want to expand, you can just press here, add a quick class, you press new, you tie it up to device number one, and you link it to the vMix system. And then the vMix configuration that we can choose from, you see there, there are a number of them. There's playlist control, there's audio bus and that's the one that I want to use right now. So we just pick this one and let's just go back here. You can now see by just that action, adding this entry into this list, associating it, associating it with vMix means that if I press this button, I get direct access to managing audio buses on vMix. So there you have it, customization with a lot of content by just adding a row into this table. So let's look at what that does. We have the master bus here. We have bus A, bus B, bus C. So let's just go to the master bus, bus we have seen before. And you can see that the volume can be adjusted. The fader is moving in the UI here. As I'm doing that, I can also mute it on and off and so on. So you can see how the same would be the case for the other buses that I can manage inside. And that's all by simply adding that quick class. That quick class can be obviously for vMix, it could be for video routers and a whole lot of other things because we are expanding the list of quick class configurations all the time in this way. So that's how wonderful Reactor is in terms of letting you select bigger chunks of functionality, which is quite complex and advanced, but in a very easy way. And just to let you know, if you're really adventurous, then you can go into the configuration tab and this is where you get the full Monty of everything because and, and now watch because as I'm pressing keys on this one, I'm basically detecting if I press this key or this one up here, you can see that it's it's surfing around in this UI to find exactly where is the function of this key defined. And that was defined on this layer. It's called Q1, the key. This is shown in the UI. And over here, you can see that it's associated with a parameter that we are changing value for and so on. And I won't go into those details because that requires you to learn a little bit. But on the home screen, this is where you get all the ease out of the box that Reactor and Blue Pill is giving to you. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you really liked the Airfly and see the potential of starting with this wonderful controller for vMix, which has all the power, ease of use, and also the possibility for future expansions that you need. So follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hope to see you again another time.